Hello, it's uh, Stephen Hayes again from Fruit Wise Heritage Animals continuing our um, series of tutorials on pruning apple trees. Uh, thanks to those of you who've clicked on to the uh, previous um, uh, tutorials. I've been asked to advise about pruning the Bramley. Uh, now for those of you who don't live in the UK, you may not have heard of Bramley, but it's our most widely grown apple. It's a famous cooking apple. It's a big green apple if it's pruned well and it gets sun to it, it'll get a red flush and maybe I'll show you that next, uh, next um, harvest. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good quality eating apple, a cooking apple, and it will keep quite well. You can eat it if you keep it right through until February when it goes um, yellow and it becomes sweet. It's, it's a great apple. Um, it's not the only cooking apple, there are many other cooking apples and some of them are easier to manage than the Bramley. And I'm dedicating this tutorial just to the Bramley because it's quite a challenging tree. First of all, I'd like you to note the space between these trees. These trees, this is a cider apple called Tremble, it's bitter, and this is Bramley. Now these trees are on Mallingmerton 106, no, Mallingmerton 111, 111 rootstock, and these trees were planted 10 years ago. Bear that in mind, these trees were planted 10 years ago, and when we planted them, where I'm standing, uh, we planted uh, some other trees, some trees called Sunset, uh, an eating apple. Now we removed them uh, two years ago because the trees were all too crowded. You can see we've done better than planting the trees initially at this distance. Now, the distance of planting trees apart is very important, no more so than with Bramley, because it's a big tree. So if you look at this tree, I'm six feet tall, and my arm, my fingers are six feet apart. The size of this tree, look how big it is, look how big it wants to be. Um, it's a great big growing tree. Now, if you want to grow a Bramley, uh, keep on, on an ordinary sized garden, you may wish to put it on a small rootstock such as Malling 9 or even Malling 27, which is the very smallest rootstock. Uh, because Bramley A wants to grow really big, it's just genetically, it wants to be a really big tree. And the other thing is it mainly fruits on the tips. And we'll be pruning this in a, moment, in a, in a separate video to keep these two videos to a sensible length. Um, the same is true, if you go back to the first tutorial, the same thing is true about Bramley's as any other apple tree. Each year we want the tree to do three things. We want it to produce a bit of, um, to produce some new growth. We want it to produce some fruit buds uh, on the previous year's growth. And we want some fruit to be produced on buds which are t on two year wood and older. And this tree did crop reasonably well last year. So that, that thing, and we need to keep the tree in balance so that every year you get new growth, formation of new buds and fruit on the older buds. However, there's a difference with Bramley. Bramley is a tip bearer. It produces, you can see there's a fruit bud. On the tip of last year's growth, there's a fruit bud. And here again, on the tip of last year's growth, there's a big fruit bud. So if you, if you go around a Bramley tree and incorrectly prune it, and if I'm labouring this point, it's because I've seen this done so often and so badly, People will go around snipping the tips off, snip, 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 snip. That is not the way to prune a Bramley. Um, you've got to saw out the complete systems. So again, we'll start pruning the areas where the wood is too big. This here, uh, this, is, this was a good branch in the past, uh, but it's got to come out this year. You might ask, well, why has it got to come out this year if it was okay last year? The answer is, in previous years, it was up here. This branch was up here, and that's a good angle, a good branch angle, but it fruited, and the heavy weight of fruit pulled it down. This has got plenty of bud on it. If we let it fruit this year, it'll be down on the ground. Now, when Julia's riding around in the ride-on mower, this is going to get in the way. It's also going to impede the flow of air through the tree, so this branch will be taken clean out. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, uh, this branch is probably okay, but we need to reduce it to some extent, perhaps cut back to an upward-facing branch. We don't want this down here, but on the other hand, we take it out here, this will make a very good branch, and it'll grow to a good angle. Um, again, you see the tree is so thick, I can't get into the tree. I, I can't get into the tree, it's just too big, it's too thick, too heavy. We don't want apples up there, I can't reach them to pick them. I can't reach these apples to pick them. Um, we don't go up ladders in trees anymore, uh, so that'll come clean out. Uh, of course, one of the great things about the Bramley is the huge, big, old Bramley, which is a bit of a nature reserve. Um, you know, all sorts of birds and things live in it. You can even build a tree house in it. So when I say um, make sure you've got, you've got enough space or use a very dwarfing rootstock, 
on the Malling 27. Of course, if you want to have a huge, great, big spreading tree in your garden for the kids to have a swing on, um, or you build a little tree house in, and you don't mind if it isn't, if it's only minimally managed, and a lot of the fruits are magazines can't get up there to spray them, then that's okay. A Bramley is a great tree for that. Uh, just don't ruin it by the wrong kind of pruning. Okay, well that's, uh, that's enough chat about the Bramley. Now we'll uh, go on to the next video and actually give you an idea how to prune it.